Hi. Does aid work? That's a simple and quite straightforward question, and it's highly legitimate. Taxpayers in donor countries, as well as citizens in recipient countries, would deserve a good answer to that. I work with evaluation at NORAD and trying to verify whether Norwegian aid gives results. In the previous position, I worked as an academic researcher on the effects of aid, and I read hundreds of studies on the topic. So, I should be able to answer that simple question. But it's not that easy. Uh, neither aid agencies nor academia are really able to give a straightforward answer to that seemingly straightforward question. Or, the problem is perhaps almost the opposite. There is a lot of different answers out there. Many of them can be justified by high quality research or other evidence. But the answers differ and they often seem contradictory. I will claim that this is not only because we don't know. Uh, there are indeed huge knowledge gaps. But there is also a lot of evidence that can tell us about the effects of aid. Uh, the problem is, is just as much that the question is not as straightforward as it seems. I'm planning to share with you what evidence points at when it comes to answering the question. But in this lecture, I'm only going to talk about the question. What does it mean that aid works? It can indeed mean a lot of different things. Uh, as a start, I would like to make a distinction between the interventions that are supported by aid and aid as such. There is a possible paradox here. Uh, it may be that aid funds interventions that works, but that doesn't necessarily mean that aid works. So let me start with the question of whether interventions work. We can say that an aid financed intervention works if it leads to the planned improvements in people's lives. In its easiest version, we may say that an intervention works if we can observe improvements that are in line with the stated objectives for the project or the program. Uh, simply said, some people are better off when the project ends than when it started. Aid managers know that it's not that easy. Observing change is not enough anymore. There is a strong pressure to document the results, preferably to measure results uh, so they can be presented as numbers, quantified and aggregated into a report that sums up a lot of results from many different interventions. Uh, this is a challenge for aid managers, partly because interventions often aim at improvements that are not very tangible. So it's a big challenge to measure and to quantify them. Um, but on the other hand, there are expectations that are quite different. Uh, fundraisers and policymakers uh, may primarily ask for uh, something that can support their claim that aid works by telling the good stories. So we may perhaps say that interventions work if they can transform funds into stories that can touch the hearts of Western donors or taxpayers. But even if one is able to document results uh, or to tell the good stories, that doesn't mean that interventions really work. Uh, you don't know that the improvements you are seeing are caused by aid. Uh, these days, most people and societies are in fact actually doing better year by year, regardless of aid. Uh, that is mainly because of economic growth and some of other improvements. So a lot of aid agencies may claim success of aid because they see improvements in a society or among individuals. That doesn't mean that the improvements are caused by aid. In evaluations, we try to assess causality. We ask whether their observed improvements are due to aid or not. This is challenging methodologically, uh, and often we can do little more than to conduct a contribution analysis. Uh, sometimes we can conclude on what we call attribution, meaning that we can state with confidence that what changes the interventions has led to. Uh, but, uh, the most important question is maybe not attribution, but the counterfactual. Uh, we don't know what would have happened without the intervention. The alternative to an intervention is never that nothing else would happen. It is that something else would have happened. Uh, people might probably try to solve their problems in other ways with more or less success if it wasn't for that intervention. And this is where the counterfactual comes in. The real effects of an intervention would be the difference between the situation after an intervention 
uh, compared with the hypothetical situation that would have been there if the intervention had not been there in the first place. This is what we call the gold standard in evaluation of interventions. But there is even more. Uh, all interventions also have unintended effects that are not planned for and normally not monitored and reported. Uh, I would say that most interventions have negative effects in one way or the other. Those in charge generally do not report as such because the monitoring systems are not designed to monitor what was not foreseen from the start. Uh, and here is where evaluations may come in. Good evaluations will try to identify also the unplanned and even the negative effects. Uh, the negative effects would normally not outweigh the positive ones, but that perhaps depends on who you ask. Uh, so the fact that an intervention works according to its own objectives does not necessarily mean that its, its overall effects are good. Uh, or at least we may expect that very often the net effects of, of, of an intervention are smaller than the reported results according to aid managers. Um, so, in other words, if you, want, if you ask whether an intervention works, you need to specify what you really mean by the question. Uh, the answer uh, depends much on what you really mean uh, by the question and also how strong evidence you would require with regard to causality. Uh, in my view, most aid agencies get away with only reporting on some form of observed or measured improvements according to their own terms. Uh, I find that a bit too easy. Um, the good news is that we have seen a change in the field of evaluation recent years, where evaluation agencies and evaluators uh, have ambitions, ambitions to go more into depth. Uh, we have improved methods available. Uh, and there is higher demand for high quality evaluations. Uh, they are going to challenge the aid agencies and their own reporting of results, both with regard to whether interventions actually made a difference uh, and also to identify the unintended, unforeseen effects, both positive and negative, of the interventions. But all this so far is about interventions. And as I said, the interventions, that interventions work does not necessarily mean that aid works. So, if we then turn our attention to the issue of aid, we have to take into account many more questions before concluding on whether aid works. Uh, and the first thing, of course, is what do you expect aid to work on? Uh, aid is subject to many different and perhaps conflicting expectations to what it is supposed to do. Uh, some would expect more tangible improvements that eases some immediate problems in poor people's lives. Um, others would say that that is not enough if it, and that aid is only worthwhile if it leads to some lasting changes, perhaps by leading to long-term economic growth or to improvement in states and societies or state policies. Uh, and uh, much of aid is subject to some expectation that aid should lead to the development of Western liberal democracies uh, or Western-like liberal democracies according to our models. Uh, and also aid is governed by different policy objectives that may be in internal conflict. The most obvious perhaps is environmental sustainability and economic growth. Uh, so we may easily see that aid may work according to one different policy, ob one policy objective uh, while at the same time uh, working against other policy objectives. And we may have to face that the donor priorities are not necessarily the same as the recipient priorities. Uh, in the aid agency, it is Western powers that define both the poor countries' problems and the solutions to those problems. The donor's analysis may be wrong or biased, uh, and they may be quite indifferent to the stated needs and priorities from recipients. Uh, so, uh, that aid works according to donor preference doesn't necessarily mean that it is seen as relevant and useful for the recipients. Donors may succeed in improving literacy among the poor, but if the poor don't find jobs and do not feel more empowered as a result of literacy,
they may still feel that it was not relevant and useful, perhaps not worthwhile. Or uh, there may be different political priorities between donors and recipients. During my research on aid effects in Malawi, I often heard a statement like, you can't eat democracy. That is a statement that may be seen as a quite strong criticism of donor priorities. So, as one criteria for whether aid works, it should be that the interventions supported are not only effective, but also relevant and useful. And the answer to that will probably depend on who you ask. And there is another important point. Uh, in aid, there is um, a lot of funding available, but not necessarily so many good interventions and well-run institutions that can manage those interventions. Uh, at least that is, I, was, I, I believe that is the case. And if that is the case, uh, we ha may have the paradox that funding intervention that works are not necessarily the best form of aid. Perhaps the donor just picks some low-hanging fruits that would have been supported by other donors anyway. The donor can report good results, but it has made little difference. Um, and it may even be that the donor should have left uh, some of those low-hanging fruits to national governments to fund, so that the government can demonstrate to their taxpayers and to voters that public spending can be used for good and that taxation is then good. Uh, after all, if donors take all the good interventions, what is left for the government to fund may be the things that are not that visible uh, and do not serve to legitimize uh, a strong and good public sector and to legitimize taxation in the end. So another criteria for aid that works would be that aid really makes a difference in enabling or upscaling effective interventions uh, and do not primarily replace other donors or government spending. And there is another dimension to this too. There is a lot of research that demonstrates that aid is fungible. It means that uh, if donors fund a sector, the government will spend less in the same sector. That would mean that uh, the net effects of aid in terms of funding will be less than the funds spent within the same sector. Uh, so a third criteria for aid that works would then be that it increases the overall resources available in the sector. But Aid cannot only be judged with reference to the interventions it funds. Um, and aid does not happen in isolation. So the success criteria for aid should be related to the overall effects of all resources available. Um, very often uh, donors uh, may attract some of the best professionals to secure success of their own projects. If so, those professionals will not work elsewhere, perhaps in the same sector. Um, and interventions and aid uh, projects uh, may lead to administrative burden on the relevant ministries. So its capaci capacity will be reduced. Uh, and they may distract the ways ministries work and impose new ways of management, new ways of working. Uh, overall, it may be, and there is a lot of evidence supporting this, um, that it may be that aid uh, may reduce or at least threaten the efficiency of the use of resources in the public sector. Um, so once again, it means that effective interventions do not necessarily mean effective aid. So we can put out a fourth criteria for aid that works. Uh, aid will support or will lead to all resources available in the sector being better utilized. So far, I've talked about effects of aid in the specific sector, uh, but aid can also have effects outside the sector and on national development more generally. Some of those effects may be quite harmful. Economists sometimes talk about the micro-macro paradox. It means that each project or many projects may be successful on economic terms, but the combined aggregate effects of those may still hamper growth. Uh, the same is probably the case for other aspects of ec development than growth. We know that aid poses a huge burden on state administration in general. 
uh, and also that aid has potential political consequences. In fact, it can be well justified that aid has both strengthened dictatorships at times and also undermined democracies. Uh, if so, there is a micro-macro paradox in political development uh, too. Uh, we may see that even democratization projects may be successful on their own terms, but on aggregate level uh, they may have some negative effects on democracy and, na and national development, partly by undermining other processes and national democratic processes. This is not because any of the individual interventions or any spe specific donor do not succeed, but it is the combined effects of many interventions, many donors. So if we take this knowledge into account, we have to add another dimension to the question of aid that works. Uh, even if each intervention or if each agency um, is successful, uh, still it may be that the combined aggregate effects of all aid uh, can have negative implications. So that aid that works must then be aid where the positive effects of interventions outweigh the negative aggregate effects of all interventions. Another criteria for aid that works would then be that the combined positive effects of all the interventions uh, would outweigh the possibly negative effects of larger volumes uh, of aid. So that the aggregate effects of all aid uh, will be positive, uh, although probably less than the combined positive effects of each intervention, since many of the negative effects uh, only materialize at the aggregate level. Finally, and perhaps most important, we can ask about the counterfactual situation. Nobody knows how poor countries would have developed without aid. But we can be sure that the alternative to aid would not be that nothing would have happened. It would be that something else would have happened. People, societies and governments would have tried other solutions to solve their problems. So maybe the most important criteria for whether aid works would be that the situation in countries receiving aid is better than the hypothetical counterfactual situation that would have been there if aid had not been there? That is a question that we are never going to be able to answer.